thrill me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. It's Review It Man, reviewing what he can. Movies are his jam, so let's get twisted, man. It's Review It Rob. Hey, yo, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Review It Rob show, man. Appreciate you joining in to me. I hope these... Friday episodes are catching you easy because it's, you know, I'm still trying to get used to it. You know what I mean? Sitting here, just came back from the movie theater. Finally, went back to the movie theater, man, to watch a movie. It's been a couple weeks. I have not, you know, been feeling like going to the theater for um, mental health reasons and just not being able to focus on movies. And then, you know, other reasons about annoying people at theaters, which I ran into again tonight. Uh, Jeez, you know. I, all I'm going to say is I, I can't wait for school to start back up. <laughs> I can't wait for school to start back up and get these nasty heathen children back in school so they won't be there on at least Thursday night screenings of movies anymore. But I digress. Finally went to the movie theater, saw, as you can tell by the title of this episode, The Haunted Mansion film. The new one, first Haunted Mansion movie since 2003. And I'm going to try my best not to bring that movie up to me too, uh, too often. Try not to compare the two films all that much because that's not necessarily fair. You don't want to do that too much as well. I didn't realize that movie was 20 years old. I mean, when I looked at it and I saw 2003, I'm like, what? How is that movie 20 years old? It does not feel like it's 20 years old. Now, if you watch the movie, maybe it does kind of feel a little, you know, 20 year old ish. But nonetheless, going to try not to compare the two films all that much, man. Before I jump into my thoughts on this new Haunted Mansion movie, and it's just called Haunted Mansion, not The Haunted Mansion, um, thank you for listening to the show. I appreciate you. Please hit that like, subscribe, and share, as well as thank you uh, for paying attention to the Throw Me Podcast Network, where we got all kinds of fun stuff going on. It is Hazen, pretty much, where all kinds of fun stuff is going on, so check out Haunter's Podcast. They got all the details going down over there. You might catch a little review of Rob there every now and then. As well, check out the Metal Groove Podcast for my brother Tombstone Joshua. He's got all that metal goodness for your soul to melt your face, man. So, all that and all kinds of other fun stuff going on around the Throw Me Podcast Network, but none Nonetheless, let's go ahead and jump in to my spoiler-free thoughts on Haunted Mansion. The film is rated PG-13 for some thematic elements and scary action. It is considered a fantasy comedy film running in at two hours and two minutes, and it is in theaters at the time. Uh, Let's see, synopsis, a woman and her son enlist a motley crew, not that band, that would be even better if motley crew was in this movie. Um... Enlist a motley crew of so-called spiritual experts to help rid their home of supernatural squatters. Well, that's one way to uh, describe it. Now, of course, the film just came out. It just debuted. Uh, this is a Thursday night preview. More things will be coming for the film as well as uh, scores and all that stuff at a later time. Again, I don't. if you're new to the show, I don't care about these scores. These scores do not deter me from seeing a movie by any means. I just give them to let you know there's all kinds of wide varieties of thoughts about films, and it's okay for you to have your opinion about a movie because we all love what we love. Uh, at the moment, Rotten Tomatoes only has a critic score, which is up to 41%. Uh, before I went and saw the movie tonight, it was at 40%. That is the critic score. It is now up to 41%. There is not an audience score at the moment. And IMDB has it at a sitting at a 5.9 out of 10 at the moment. That course could change throughout the weekend or whatever. Um, so this is basically a film inspired by the classic Disney theme park attraction Haunted Mansion. There is multiple versions of the Haunted Mansion. There is the Disneyland one. There's the Walt Disney World one. Yada, yada. I say yada yada to get my head to catch up to bring up the Disney stuff back to the front of my brain. Uh, So like I mentioned, Disneyland, Magic Kingdom, Tokyo Disneyland all have the Haunted Mansion ride. Then in Disneyland Paris, they have Phantom Manor, Hong Kong Disneyland. They have Mystic Manor, which is different versions of the ride. So I don't know why I'm bringing that up anyways, but I am me and I am random that way. Uh, This film is based on the uh, New Orleans Haunted Mansion, which is the Disneyland Haunted Mansion. Again, just a little bit of Disney news here. Uh, news, it's not even news. Disney talk. Um, 
uh, the two parts are different in styles, or all the parts are different in styles of the mansion. Uh, the mansion looks different depending on which one you go to, and the Disneyland one is the New Orleans Square version, which is the one that is featured in this film, if you've seen the trailer and all that good stuff. So, yeah, a little catch up there for you. Now, mentioned before, I don't want to talk about the 2003 film too much, but knowing me, I probably will bring it up numerous amounts of times for un unknown reasons, uh, just for, you know, finding things to talk about. Now, they, and I bring it up because they tried this before, obviously. There's the 2003 film where they tried to make this work, and it, it did not work out too well. If you've seen the film, maybe you enjoy it, and that's fine. That's perfectly okay. I've seen the movie, I think, twice. Um, not the biggest fan of it overall. It, you know, it was an okay experience, but, you know, not what I was wanting from a Haunted Mansion movie, to say the least. It went uh, a little too over the top with the comedy, and... Uh, just, you know, tried to make its own kind of thing there. Uh, you know, there's rumors of a Guillermo del Toro Haunted Mansion, which I would have loved to have seen happen, but has not, uh, you know, ever official happen and probably unknown if it will ever happen. I think he ended up making Crimson Peak, which is his own kind of uh, deal with that. So, here we go. 2023 Haunted Mansion is back. And I remember seeing the trailers. My brother, Tombstone Josh, and I talked about it. Uh, we did a special on the Throwing Podcast Network. You can go check out where we talked about all kinds of Haunted Mansion stuff. And I was like, okay, this is intriguing. I'm interested. You know, you, you've opened my brain a little bit to wanting to see this film, even though I was worried about the cast, because the cast is a who's who of comedy, right? Uh, with Owen Wilson and Tiffany Haddish and all that stuff in there. It's like, eh, well, that's, you know, it's leaning and very comical. And I saw the trailer. I'm like, cool. I, I like some of the elements I've seen in this trailer. Let's uh, see the movie. And finally, returned to the theaters to see this movie tonight after, you know, a couple weeks hiatus. And, you know, it's 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 a tough thing, you know. Disney hit big with Pirates of the Caribbean, turning that theme park ride into a movie, and it worked out very well. Uh, everything else seems to be hitting this this tough part. You know, the aforementioned Haunted Mansion film, uh, Jungle Cruise, and I don't believe did all that well. It may have done okay, but I don't I don't know that it did all that great. There was a Tower of Terror film. They're working on another Tower of Terror film. You know, it's a long way of going to say that it's a tough situation. Kind of think about it like video games being transitioned into movies and why does it not necessarily work all that often. And my case normally is that it has something to do with the personal connection you feel with the video game. You know, you're in control of the video game. You're playing it and all that stuff. And I think, I'm thinking, because Pirates of the Caribbean, you, you can... It's a it's a water ride that you can very easily turn into this big world of pirates across all kinds of oceans and everything and just all that stuff going on. You can see it and you, it can work out well. You know, trying to turn a haunted mansion movie um, attraction ride that basically takes you as the theme park guest into the ride and you become part of it and you get to experience all that firsthand is a completely different experience, if that makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. I'm the one saying it. If it makes sense to you, what I'm saying, um, that's that's the difference. But you know, that's that personal experience with the haunted mansion attraction, where you're going through it, and you get that personal element and that personal feel of that you're of experience with it. So when you see the movie, you're wanting that same kind of vibe. And I think, and it, my thoughts on this movie are a little clouded because. I didn't hate the movie at all. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. I do not hate this movie. I do feel that, and I haven't been through the attraction in quite some time. I love the Haunted Mansion. I haven't been to Disney World in quite some time. But the ride itself always seems a little spookier than what you remember, I guess, if that makes sense. And, you know, watching behind-the-scenes stuff and all that, it's supposed to be a dark... Not, not fully horror, but ghost, ghostly story element kind of ride with some comedy sprinkled in there. Um, what the 2003 film got wrong was too much comedy, and what this movie almost gets wrong is too much comedy. Because there is comedy aspects in it, which is fine. Again, the theme park ride has comedy aspects involved in it as well. A little less, a little more subtle. You know, a little more subtle than what this was. And again, of course, you've got Owen Wilson in the movie, which he's fine. The whole cast, by the way, is good. They, you know, they do their job perfectly well for the characters that were made for this film. They do a good job. All of that stuff. The reason my thought process is cloudy on this, because I did enjoy the the scary moments, if you were the scary action, as they put it. The, the scary thematic elements. I enjoyed all that stuff. 
Uh, they have some jump scares in there, so be prepared for that. You know, a good couple of there. But I, I enjoyed the ghostly aspect of it. Because, again, this is the Haunted Mansion. It's all about 999 happy haunts in the house, right? They're all in that mansion. It's about it's a ghost story. It's a, it's a ghost vibe and all that stuff. And the story is, you know, fine enough. You know, this is not spoiler elements by any means. You saw it in the trailer. Um, a mom and a son move into the Haunted Mansion. You know, that's that's what it is. Um, is you know, I, I don't want to bring up the 2003 movie, so we're not bringing that up anymore. We're going to leave that over there. So that's the whole idea. They, of course, find out the house is haunted. There's a Casper vibe to it, right? And Which is fine. I, I love the Casper movie. I grew up with that movie, so, you know, there's there's nostalgia bits to it, but I still enjoy that movie every Halloween season. I throw that on and have a good time. So it's fine if it has that vibe to it, but not fine if you can't live up to it, <laughs> if you know what that means. So it's it's hard to say because I'm trying to decide, and that's why I like doing this show like so fresh after thinking about it because I'm still processing everything through my mind. So I'm trying to decide if I enjoyed this movie mostly because of the Easter eggs, which they do a fantastic job with. That is the thing you will love about this movie, especially if you've been through the attraction at, in, uh, if, at Disneyland or, or um, Tokyo Disneyland or Walt Disney World, any of those. because They're different in the other ones. Um, but if you've been through that theme park and um, theme park attraction and you've had that personal experience with it you're gonna love seeing and picking out these easter eggs because i had a great time with that like i love seeing oh i remember that in the ride oh i remember that ride oh they brought that in that's cool oh they're explaining this that's awesome love it love it love it like that's the main draw awesome part of this movie is that they nailed those easter eggs that you want to see man i'm not just talking about the wallpaper you know i'm talking about all kinds of elements and i'm being very vague here because again spoilers man i don't want to you know i don't want to go into all that stuff so I love that, and I absolutely love that, and it, you know that obviously raises my personal feelings and review of the film to a higher level because I liked that. Now the movie being two hours, I don't know. You know that's the part that I'm still trying to sit on. It is. This is something I had to tell myself multiple times while watching the movie, especially when I was talking earlier about the comedy aspects of it. Is that you know it was a little overboard. Some of the comedy good, but some of it just a little too much at points, and forced or pushed in there and all that stuff, and I had to tell myself multiple times while watching this movie, it's a kid's movie. It is a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a kid's movie. Like, this is, you know, one of those films that a kid would watch on, you know, on, did Nickelodeon show movies? I don't remember, <laughs> you know, but, you know what I mean, it's, 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 it feels like one of those, you know, Disney, young, young teen kind of movies without like the teen romance and all that stuff but yeah you know what i'm getting at it, it, it's it's a kid's film with scary elements involved in it you know as mentioned before with casper right and just you know casper did very well and nailed what it needed to nail this movie does a good enough job and i enjoyed it like i did not leave the movie theater by any means like oh i hate the fact that i returned to the movie theaters to see this movie you know i hate the fact that they're freaking teenagers and the you know <laughs> that showed up halfway through the movie by the way not there at the beginning showed up halfway through the movie making loud noises had their phones open thank god they left a couple minutes later oh man this is why i don't go to the movie theaters too often anymore again please school start back up get these nasty heathens back in school but nonetheless the film itself i did enjoy like, I, I, again, and mostly probably because of the Easter eggs, but the story's not hard to follow. You know, maybe there's a little crack here and there where it's like, well, if they did that, why can they just do that? Kind of, that's just, you know, guy who watches a lot of movies, you know, being overly picky is what that is. But I enjoyed it. You know, I, I can't say that I hated the movie by any means. Definitely more positive experience than, again, the before mentioned 2003 film. But, you know, um, I did enjoy it. You know, I had a good enough time with it. Now, as far as uh, credit scenes or anything like that, there's not one. Um, there is no credit scene at the end, which is typical for Disney um, theme park movies. They they haven't done that with the other ones. So, you know, I mean, basically the credits are going to start. There's, you know, a little, little music going on and all that stuff. You know, ghostly swoop in front of the screen, just like Casper again, bringing up Casper. And then it just goes off, um, goes into the credits, like all that stuff. There's not a bonus credit scene. There's not a teasing or setting up anything else. None of that, you know, but that's fine. We don't need that for every single movie. 
But overall thoughts, you know, at the end of the day, if you love the theme park ride, you're going to enjoy, you know, aspects of the movie. You're going to like parts of it. There's parts of my, and going around in my brain, like kind of Transformers wise, like I don't, I'm here to see the Haunted Mansion. You know, like people go to see Transformers. I'm like, I'm here to see the Transformers. Like, I don't need these other people, you know, kind of clouding up stuff. Like, I get it. You know, I understand that, you know, got to have some stories and all that stuff, but like, I just want the Haunted Mansion, you know, <laughs> you know, I just want that. But again, I, how well is that going to work, you know, as, as a, you know, a movie itself, just, oh, we're at the mansion, you know, you, yeah, I guess you got to tell something to get us there. But I mean, you could tell the vast number of stories of the, the characters involved in the, in the ghost involved in the house, you know, so, and you kind of get, you know, some of that in the movie, again, not going into spoilers, but you, you kind of get some backstories in there every now and then, but I don't know. Like I, it, it's that it's that weird aspect where I didn't hate it whatsoever. I'd probably watch it again, right? Um, but I, I am not overwhelmingly enthusiastic about the movie. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I enjoyed, I enjoyed parts of it. If they, you know, I, it, it's it's hard, you know, <laughs> not talking about the parts that I did enjoy because they were cool, man. Like I absolutely enjoyed like the the easter egg stuff like that stuff like put it over the top for me and that's the fun part about seeing this movie again cast is good the cast is very good at what they do a little too much comedy action but the thematic scary elements in the film are pretty solid so overall solid film man i enjoyed it had a good time with it you know get questions in my brain but nonetheless i liked it don't hate it whatsoever glad it was my first film back in theaters can't wait to, you know, see what other people think about it, man. I think, speaking of Haunters earlier, I think Zach's going to see it um, soon. So get his thoughts on it and anybody else's thoughts, man. Drop them in the comments if you've already seen it. Let me know what you think about the movie. Did you enjoy it more than the 2003 film? It's not fair, obviously, to compare the two. But it's going to happen. We all know it's going to happen. But overall, man, as a Haunted Mansion theme park attraction fan, I think this movie did a good enough job to get by, you know, um, just remember it is a kitty film, you know, it's a kiddish film, it's not like super kitty by any means, but it's a kiddish film, two hours, um, they probably could have cut some elements here or there, but, you know, that's just being a little picky, um, but yeah, if you're, if, again, if you love the ride, you're gonna like the, you're gonna love the Easter eggs, man, that's gonna, that's gonna leave you with a little bit of a happy, happy thought, and make you a happy little haunt as you, you know, leave out of the theater, right? <laughs> so there you go. That's my quick thoughts, man. Uh, let's see. Going to Haunted Mansion. I would go into DC Talk, but I think the last couple of weeks we've gone straight into DC Talk. Let's go to horror, man. We just talked about a scary-ish movie. <laughs> let's go ahead and talk horror talk. Um, first thing out the box to talk about is that Exorcist trailer that dropped. Exorcist the Believer trailer dropped. Oh, my goodness. I should have done a trailer reaction to this thing. I was already on board for it, you know, cautiously optimistic, I guess would be the way to put it, for that for that movie, because I do really love that original Exorcist film, and, you know, trying to do a direct sequel, that's tough, but seeing that trailer, man, like, first seeing those three posters, I'm like, oh, this is looking, this is gonna looking pretty brutal, this is gonna look awesome, um, and then seeing that trailer, sold it even more to where I am now hyped up for that movie. I don't think there's any other movies that I'm like hyped up for this year except for um oh my god, I gotta look up the name of it. Give me a second. Um this is the section of the show every week where Rob Googles something. Um Dracula on a boat. What the hell is the name of that movie? Uh The Last Voyage of the Dementor. That movie Super stoked and excited for like that movie is on the hype list and now add the Exorcist Believer to the hype list. It wasn't on the hype list before. It was like I'm interested in list. It is on the hype list after that trailer. Other than that, like I'm intrigued by Blue Beetle. You know, I'm hoping that's okay, and, and nothing else is really coming to mind. So the rest of your Saw, we'll see what happens there. We've had a couple posters for Saw and all that stuff. I haven't had official trailer yet, but you know, sometime soon probably for that. But yeah, those two movies, The Last Voyage of the Dementor or Dracula on a Boat and um, uh, The Exorcist Believer are just going to be tough, strong candidates for my top 10 list for the year, man, because those films got me excited. The Exorcist trailer, man, I was watching it. I'm like, okay, okay. And then you hear that first little ting of the th original theme song. Oh, Goosebumps started there. And then other aspects where they, you know, introduced freaking 
the mom from the first movie, and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then the thing she said about we've met before, ah, oh, instant goosebumps. Again, goosebumps on top of goosebumps. This movie is going to be solid. I, I, and again, you know, David Gordon Green, feel how you want about him. He did a great job with Halloween 2018. I don't think any of us can dispute that. So that first movie being a direct sequel to the original classic film worked out well. And from this trailer and from those posters, it's looking like it's going to work out well here as well. We'll have to see what eventually happens. They've already announced the sequel for The Exorcist. Sequel? <laughs> Again, this is where you start getting in trouble. <laughs> um, so... This movie, The Exorcist, The Believer, is a direct sequel to the original Exorcist film. Of course, we've had an Exorcist 2, we've had an Exorcist 3, we've had an Exorcist so-and-so, we've had Exorcist, we had a couple of Exorcist films. On top of all the other Exorcism films that have, you know, happened, as well as an Exorcist film we had earlier this year with the Pope's Exorcist. Um, but this movie is looking good, and they've already announced the next Exorcist movie, which is titled The Exorcist Deceiver, which will debut in 2025. Which you already knew they were working on a trilogy there. So that's not, you know, a surprising aspect. But to already have a name and all that stuff already, seems like the hype is going, man. So can't wait for that. You know, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, let's see. Screambox, a documentary, Hollywood Dreams and Nightmares, the Robert England story, will be getting a Blu-ray special. It is, of course, streaming on Streambox now. Uh, started back in June, and it will be getting... A Blu-ray release. Special features for the Blu-ray version will include horror icons, um, Nightmare Cafe, a conversation with the directors, Robert England Chatterbox, a peek behind the curtain dance curb. Isn't that a ghost song? I don't know. And the trailer, if you want to see that as well. So that'll be part of the special features. Um, let's see. The last bit of horror news mentioned it earlier with uh, Saw. We've gotten a couple looks at that so far mostly a poster and today they gave us a first look at billy the jigsaw doll um kind of looks the same yeah <laughs> i mean it kind of looks the same not now obviously the jigsaw doll was different in spiral but i mean that classic doll that you remember from the other saw films you know, same thing you know tricycle and all that stuff um looks about the same which is fine it doesn't really need to change all that much it's always funny to me when if you've seen it i'm sure you've seen it those memes of you have to spend the night you have to spend 24 hours with one of these horror icons will you be able to survive and they got that doll in there i'm like that doll doesn't do anything <laughs> you know it's not like chucky chucky does stuff that doll is just a doll hell it's not even annabelle that has a demon attached to it it's just a doll you know <laughs> So it's always like you pick Jigsaw, but um, you pick the Billy or whatever the hell, Billy, the Jigsaw doll. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, it still looks fine. Um, yeah, you know, cautious with that movie, you know, based on the last Saw films. And that, I'm not talking about Spiral. Spiral's what it is. Spiral's fine. Um, talk about the Saw movies, like the actual, yeah, you know. They, they they got really really hard to deal with. You want to know how hard they were deal with? Check out my Patreon show. That I did. It's on the Throwing Podcast Network's Patreon, man. Go check that out. All kinds of awesome stuff on there as well um, from the rest of the gang. But I, I put it on there. It was season two of my show, Nightmare on Review It Street. Um, yeah, some of those Saw movies got really hard to watch. And I let it be known. <laughs> um, so, nonetheless, man, Saw 10 is on the way. All right, going from horror, let's talk... DC news real quick um, leading off with Zachary Levi sharing an update on whether he will reprise his role as Billy Batson slash Shazam and the DC universe saying quote I don't know what the future holds because Fury of the Gods was not well received I have no idea where we go from here um, not surprising I mean it's all up in the air see how things really end up working out um, now he did mention something about the critic score for the film on Rotten Tomatoes was um, he's not sure why I got such a bad score and why it was so low and all that stuff and I just want to go to Rotten Tomatoes real quick and see what we got here because he did mention the audience score was still fairly good and you know looking at Rotten Tomatoes critic score is 49% but the audience score is still 86% like the audience score is still high up there so and I remember that when the movie came out that the the audience did like the movie like the movie received relatively fairly well from audiences so I don't know that's why I don't put a lot of belief in you know, critic scores and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all personal experience. I mean, say what you will about that Shazam movie. I personally enjoyed it. Um, I need to watch it again, but I personally enjoyed it when I saw it in theaters. And 
you know, I, I, I thought Zachary Levi was good. You know, obviously there's some questions that you have with that character and everything. And, you know, one of them being, you know, why is Shazam more kiddish than the actual kid? I don't know. I don't know the deep backstories of Shazam. You know, I don't I don't have all that backed up. I think what really honestly hurt this, and it's the same thing that hurt the Flash and hopefully does not hurt Blue Beetle and Aquaman that's coming, is that DC is going through this regrouping. And, you know, if people have this stupid thought process of, oh, I'm just not connected to anything, I'm not going to watch it. Um, so that's kind of deterred them from it. And of course, there was, I think Zachary Levi said something about Pfizer at this time and you know, he wasn't necessarily wrong because he wasn't talking about the vaccine. Everybody took it as he was talking about the vaccine. It's just, you know, the internet being stupid. So, I don't know. That movie's fine. If you have Max, go watch it. It's an enjoyable film. If you enjoyed the first movie, there's no way you wouldn't enjoy this one. So, you know, as far as him returning in the DCU is Shazam. No idea. We know absolutely nothing about, you know, casting and, you know, those characters for the DCU for, you know, what James Gunn and Peter Safran have coming. Like, all we know about is Superman Legacy, uh, Peacemaker 2, uh, The Waller Show, um, Creature Commando we've gotten cast for, Creature Commando. Command, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we just have to wait, man. We're in the waiting process, which goes into our next part, where James Gunn is clarifying some rumors about what's going on with the DCU. Of course, he recently announced Green Lantern, Sky Gardner, Hawk Girl, and Mr. Terrific would be part of Superman Legacy's story, uh, which has led to people on the internet being asshats and speculating that um, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav made Gunn put them in there to attract potential buyers. Uh, Gunn saw this report and denied the report, saying, quote, of course not, they fit the story I'm telling, end quote. Which, again... That's kind of what they said to begin with when it came to the DC studios is that Gunn and Saffron are in charge. Of course, they show Zaslav what's going on, but they've been given full reign over there, man. So the internet will come up with some stuff. Uh, the other thing they've come up with is that just uh, Warner Brothers DC announced over the weekend that Justice League animated film um, based on Crisis on Infinite Earths will be releasing in 2024, which again led to people on the internet making up stuff in their heads. Uh, saying that a possible live-action film by Gunn will be coming later. However, Gunn shut down the rumor by rely, uh, replying to a fan by simply saying, quote, no, on threads. Threads, not Twitter. Um, so, again, good old rumors. You know, take it what it is. We won't know anything until it is actually officially announced. My same process with Halloween Horror Nights. I saw it all day today. Um, as the recording this episode, of course, it's a different day when you're listening to this, but people are getting were upset or, you know, sad that they didn't get a Halloween Horror Nights announcement. That, of course, has been happening all throughout the year, which is fine. I mean, that's your own personal opinion and personal thought process and everything. I'm not attacking that, necessarily. It's just saying you're working yourself up, you know, hoping for something because other people are saying to wait for it or it's coming. Just wait for it, man. Wait for it and let Halloween Horror Nights announce it. It's a great feeling. Like, it's an amazing feeling to sit there and just get a notification of, oh, Halloween Horror Nights is posted something. What they post? Oh, it's a house announcement. Oh, that's freaking awesome. That's rad. You know, what can you do? <laughs> what can you do? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I work different. I guess my brain is just a different rhythm than other people, man. That's why I connect so well to Ezra Miller's Flash character. It's just because he says, he says stuff like that. People are on, like, a different rhythm, you know, and I feel that, man. I, I, I just, again, why I love that Flash movie so much, I connect with that character. Um, is that it? No. Uh, DC also revealed that Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom will have a tie-in comic featuring Arthur, Orm, and Black Manta. So if you're into reading the comic books and you want to get a little tie-in action, sound a little bit dirtier than I meant it, or did I... Who knows? You take it for what it is. Um, before that Aquaman movie possibly comes out December. If you remember the last episode, we don't know if that movie's being pushed back or not. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, so that, there you go. Alright, so that was DC talk. That was horror talk. Other bits of news circling around the world. And the biggest news in the world, especially the film world, is freaking Barbenheimer. It did well. You know, it did pretty good over the weekend. Barbie freaking dominated. Breaking records. Um, most recently breaking Monday's record for um, Warner Brothers. It was previously uh, held by Batman, uh, the Dark Knight. But um, Barbie made a bigger gathering of money, if you will, um, on Monday as well. 
I mean, just over the weekend, dominating is already at half a million dollars in less than a week. Understand that. Like, in less than a week, that movie has already made half a million dollars. It is well on its way to challenging Mario for the biggest film of the year, money-wise, at the box office in less than a week. Like, Barbie has done amazing. And, you know, it's a couple things to really wonder why. Why did Barbie hit so well when uh, The Flash didn't, when uh, Fast and Furious Fast X didn't, when Indiana Jones didn't, um, Guards of the Galaxy did all right, um, Mission Impossible did all right, but, you know, all these films were expected to be huge box office successes, and they just fell off and didn't do it, but Barbie came out here and hit a home run in less than a week, you know, and no, no offense to it whatsoever, I'm happy for it, that is so cool, I love Margot Robbie, so to see her have a film where she's the leading actress be huge is awesome, love it for her, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's surprising, you know, it, it's surprising, there's no other way to go around it, but I think what helps this movie was the amazing press for it. For one thing, the marketing for that movie has been awesome. On top of that, the whole Barbenheimer internet takeover thing that happened really worked out very well for, you know, again, Oppenheimer did well, um, but Barbie mostly being the, the, the leader there. I think it just worked out because it just felt like something different, right? You know, even though it's a freaking classic, iconic toy, right? or doll, whenever you want to, hey, we're not getting that debate, you know, but it, it felt like something different, you know, we're so used to superhero films, and, you know, sequels here, and sequels there, or movies being remade, and all that stuff, to where, it's the first ever Barbie movie, right, it's the first ever live action Barbie film, and it just hit, man, and it hit for people, and people just wanted to go see it, they wanted to have a good time, they felt, again, with that internet, you know, social media atmosphere that we live in, where people have to do the trendy thing, they're like, oh, Barbenheimer, we gotta go see it, we gotta go see Barbie, we gotta go see Barbie, and all that stuff, which is cool, good for him, you know, and the amount of money that movie has made is, you know, helping out what, you know, Warner Brothers lost in marketing for The Flash, because The Flash is made, before it left theaters, The Flash made, uh, based on the numbers I saw, it made its budget back, um, it was just more marketing that they had to make up for, and Barbie is just kicking ass, so, you know, it's, it's making up for that, and possibly anything else, Warner Brothers would lose with Blue Beetle or um, Aquaman coming, um, it's awesome, man, and speaking of The Flash, it's killing it on streaming right now, so it's making its money there as well, so, fun stuff, man, fun, fun stuff that I happy for, man, I haven't seen Barbie yet, I don't know if I'll get to see it uh, before it leaves theaters, you know, we're about to, we're ramping up for some more movies, um, we have what I refer to as the worst handshake of all time out this week as well, um, Talk To Me, new A24 movie, uh, Ninja Turtles is next week, um, there's another movie, there's, there's a bunch of movies coming up. Um, so we'll see. Uh, Mission Impossible. This is going to sound stupid, but I don't know if I want to see Mission Impossible because it's no longer an RPX. You know, um, for some reason I just want to see that movie in RPX. And if I can't see it, I'm like, oh, I'm not going. Um, and then Oppenheimer. I was never really all that interested in seeing that movie in theaters. So who knows? But freaking more power to him. I'm glad Barbie is doing great now. The problem that this brings and that we're already seeing is that Barbie is going to get a universe. Like, the creators over there want to make a universe with all these uh, created, you know, characters from that, I'm blanking on whatever, Mattel, I think it is, um, that makes the Barbie and all these other characters I mean, more power to them. But every single thing does not need a universe. And, you know, we've already got the Marvel Universe, we've got the DC Universe, we've got the Star Wars universe, I guess you can say. Um, you've got, uh, apparently Hasbro is building a universe as well, so, you know, what can you say? <laughs> you know, I guess everything has to be a university. And again, 
it's not working out for Marvel right now. It did in the beginning, sure, but right now, over the last, ever since Endgame, it's been tough. You know, Spider-Man was good. Um, Guards of the Galaxy was really good. Other than that, you know, even the shows, like, I can't even tell you, Loki, maybe was the last show I watched. I, I don't remember which one came out first, Winter Soldier, or Falcon and the Winter Soldier, or Loki, but... I haven't kept up with them. And this latest show has gotten the worst reviews, I think, of anything Marvel has done. So it's like, it's do you want to start a universe right now? It seems like that trend is dying. But at the same time, we got DC. We got the DC universe starting back up in 2025. And apparently, uh, Mattel, I think Mattel is the right word. Mattel universe and, uh, and uh, the um, Hasbro universe, which I'm... You know, fine with that one because that means Power Rangers are possibly coming. And you don't know me, I'm a huge Power Rangers fan. Nonetheless, congratulations to Barbie being freaking awesome at the movie theaters. It is already, I think, sixth on the box office list of films from the year so far in one week. It'll be, I mean, God, it's going to be over a billion probably this weekend. It'll probably go over a billion. Which, again, more power to him, man. All right, let's see. Other news. Righteous Gemstones, a show that I love. My brother and I watched that show. We've talked about it several times. I was on that show um, the first season. But uh, they have officially announced a fourth season for the Righteous Gemstones. They show announced it will renew its critically acclaimed comedy series ahead of its season three finale. Get ready for more of the hilarious adrenaline ride that is the Righteous Gemstones, uh, said Amy... Gravit, the executive vice president of HBO programming, which, yes, awesome, love it, may try out again to be on the show uh, as they do film in Charleston, South Carolina, all over South Carolina. But I love that show, man. That show is so fantastic and good, especially with that cast. What a freaking, talk about a stellar cast, that whole cast, man. Love that show. That show's such a good time. Uh, speaking of shows on streaming networks, uh, Donald and Stephen Glover have signed on to write to Lucasfilm's Lando series for Disney+. Plus. Uh, that show has been in development since December of 2020. That's when stuff started talking about it being in the works. Uh, this will, of course, be on Donald Glover, who played Lando in the 2018 Star Wars prequel film Solo, uh, which people are divided on whether they like that or not, like that movie. But, dude, Donald Glover's awesome. You know, again, why not give it a go? See how it all works out, and go from there. I haven't watched the Star Wars shows either, so I, I know what you're saying when I was talking about the Marvel stuff. You're like, well, you're not a Marvel guy. Fine, but I do enjoy Star Wars, and I haven't watched a whole lot of the Star Wars shows, except for Obi Wan. I watched Obi Wan pretty much as soon as it debuted, you know, because I was in, like, I was hooked into that. I'm like, heck, freaking yeah, let's go, dude. Um, the other stuff, I think I watched two episodes of The Mandalorian season one, and still need to get back to. Didn't hate it, but I just forgot that. Y'all know, if you've been with me from the beginning of the show, you know that I still haven't finished watching a lot of shows, including Riverdale. Just lost cause at this point. Um, so I eventually watch Star Wars shows, especially before Riverdale. That for, that's for damn sure. But that's good on them, man. You know, I think last week they talked about how the show just lost its writers or was up in the air and all that stuff. And now, you know, you got Donald Glover writing for it. So you got the star behind it. He's going to write it for sure. That's cool, man. Let's see how it all works out. Uh, before mentioning the Teenage Mutant Instruments film, Mutant Mayhem will be hitting theaters next week. And Paramount Pictures is all in with the Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem as Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon movies are developing a sequel already to Mutant Mayhem and planning two-season series that will serve as a bridge between the two films on Paramount+. Plus. The spinoff series is titled Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Again, that will be appearing on Paramount+, Plus in between the two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Mutant Mayhem films. Again, the first one will be hitting theaters next week. Um... This weekend at Regal, they're doing a special for it, a special screening for it. I don't know. I'm kind of waiting to see it with my brother. He's the new huge Ninja Turtle fan, so I don't know when I'll end up seeing it. I'll see it for sure um, next week when it comes out. Um, just I don't know when, but excitement, man! It's cool to see the Ninja Turtles back out there. You know, I think we all kind of want a live action film again, like the '90s one. But you know, we'll take this cartoon, man. It looks freaking freaking awesome. All right, and last bit of thing to talk about here is that Twisted Metal, the show based on the classic PlayStation video game, is now 
streaming on Peacock if you want to check that out. You know what? And before we close it out, speaking of PlayStation, we've got their August PlayStation Plus monthly games here. They've officially announced that. You'll get PGA Tour 2K23, which a game I never would have bought, but getting it because of my pass, I'll freaking... Yeah, man. I'll add it to the library and play it at some point. Uh, we get another game called Dreams. Extraordinary, ever-expanding game universe from the award-winning media molecule creators of Little Big Planet and Tearaway, where you can discover community-made games from around the world and learn how to make your own. And you got a game called Death's Door, where you experience a somber yet darkly comedic tale, utilizing melee weapons, arrows, and magic to overcome a fantasy array of beasts and demigods. And this isometric action adventure. Cool, man. That sounds interesting, actually. Um, I'm going to check that out. I might add that to the library as well. But there you go, man. That's your August PlayStation games. If you want to check those out, the July games are still up if you have time. Uh, what were the July games? Um, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Alan Wake Remastered, and Endling Extinction is forever. Um, so there you go. <laughs> that's going to do it for the show man hope you enjoyed it hope my Haunted Mansion review hit you in the right way because I tried to be as fair to that movie as possible um, so hopefully it all made sense but nonetheless that's going to do it for this episode man appreciate you, all. appreciate you all taking the time to join in and listen to the show man be sure to check out all the Throwing Podcast Network's fun activity shows that we got going activity shows with the, anyways um, all the fun stuff we got going over there we appreciate you all and all the support you give us and as always Remember that happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you all next episode.